Hi, welcome to the Rams Agents Coaching Call. Our goal is to help our agents add two referral closings per month to their current production by implementing the Referral Agent Mastery System into their practice and leveraging Rams marketing with the EXP tools such as KB Core CRM and the EXP Marketing Center. My name is Mike Cerrone. I'm a co-founder of Rams Agents here at EXP Realty, and my co-host is Angela Newman, a master trainer at Rams Agents at EXP Realty. Hello, Angela. How are you doing today? Oh, I am doing wonderful today. I'm just loving the uh, sun outside, and we're starting to warm up a little bit, so it's going to be a great day. Oh, that's fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So, uh, let me tell you what we've got uh, in store for today. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, a couple of different strategies on how to double your closings. We're going to go through some generic ideas, uh, but I think they're going to be powerful for you to at least think about and keep in the back of your mind. We're also going to go through uh, a little correction that I discovered for uh, our challenge last week on um, when somebody enters one of our contests through the text system. Uh, and our ability to download that. So I'm going to show you something I learned there. Uh, but before we get started, let's uh, let's do this. Let's share any good news. Uh, anybody have any success they would like to share with the group? I did get that listing last week. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. That signature is uh, it's, uh, a divorce uh, situation. They, they've been divorced for over a year, but uh, now the uh, husband is selling the house. I mean, they, they still both own the house. Uh, so, but the wife wasn't present for my um, listing presentation and my listing appointment. So, but, but I know her too. We, I know both of the parties. And uh, so I met with uh, the uh, former husband and presented the whole thing to him and spent a good bit of time going over the listing agreement, actually. I think we spent as much time going kind of not, not line by line, but certainly section by section of the listing agreement. Uh, and, and he really appreciated that afterwards. And he has sold a house before, but afterwards he specifically, he texted me back and said, thanks so much for uh, spending that time and really explaining all this to me. And um, anyway, then we still needed his wife, former wife to, uh, to sign. And she did that yesterday. So we're good. And so we're, we're rocking and rolling. We've got a listing agreement and we're going to start marketing it in about two weeks. He's got a few things to take care of. That's fantastic, Blake. Congratulations. Did you uh, did you also make a presentation to the wife, a separate presentation? Did you make two? I did not. I did not. I um after uh, because it was uh, the husband who contacted me uh, and and he specifically um, you know he he's the resident. He's the one who lives in the house. so I, I followed what he had asked me to do, came and met with him. I knew. Uh, I knew that she was still on the title from my uh, research, obviously, but uh, but so we just talked about that briefly, and and he told me that she, uh, I, I kind of talked to him about how how their relationship was and how would I need to meet with her because I'd like to or whatever we need to do, and um, he said she had already given him carte blanche basically to whatever he felt like doing, whatever price. Uh, he, she said, I, I, she of course needed to still agree with all that, but, but she also had given him a great deal of leeway on that. And I, and I think that he was not just, uh, boasting in that manner. I think he was pretty legit in that, that she was just saying, let's sell it and take care of it and do, do the best you can with that. Cause they, they have a good, very good relationship. They're co-parenting their daughter and, um, so they're in regular communication. It's not like they're, <laughs> it's not like they're estranged from each other. They're just not living together. But I did not get to give her a presentation. Um, he, so I gave it to him. He obviously had to transfer that information to her. She signed. Um, I intend to try and be in communication with her as much as possible. Um, we did our signatures on paper for, because uh, I really wanted to get, 
everything done on paper in his house while we were sitting there as much as I could. Um, but I told him all future stuff I'll be able to run through um, electronic signatures. And and so as we go on forward, so I know I'll be in more communication with her at that point. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, uh, check out your, I don't know what you've been doing it through, but SkySlope uh, has forms now. I think they have it for all states and they also have signatures. That's one option. And then whatever else you have, a lot of times states will have their own contracts that can, they can do digitally as well. Uh, just a couple quick thoughts there while we're on it. Uh, is, and so for listings, when you have two owners, uh, it's always best to make one presentation to both owners just in the future because things get lost in translation and you'll end up losing listings because you didn't have them both there. You got very lucky. I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> I just want you to know moving forward, uh, and, and there will be unique situations like this, but always try to get both people there for the presentation. And if you can't, at least try to be available to talk to both people so you can answer their questions. For instance, moving forward, you still need to get both signatures on everything, right? Everything yeah. that you do. And so it'd be a really good idea to reach out to uh, the other party, in this case, the lady, and uh, say, hey, I just want to introduce myself. And, you know, I, you know, well, of course, she knows you in this situation, but introduce myself and, hey, let you know I'm here and I'm available for you to answer any and all questions. Uh, I'm kind of a neutral party here. I want to make sure everything works out for both of you. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions that you have as we're moving forward. That's okay. good. That's good you advice. You are working for both of them, right? Yeah, absolutely. I am. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, good. And uh, a divorce is a unique situation, but it, it will come up where people are own a property together, married yeah, or otherwise. Sure. And uh, they'll say, hey, I can only meet with you now. And you can, I'll tell, I'll tell the other person all the information that you give me. And it never quite makes it right. In translation. <laughs> and so you end up doing two presentations if you're lucky or the other party just nicks the deal and you don't even get an opportunity. So always try to get them together uh, for a presentation moving forward. But that is fantastic news. Uh, Blake, congratulations on the listing. Um, in fact, while we have you, uh, if you don't mind, I know that you did your event last week, and I'm sure everybody's excited to find out what happened, <laughs> right? You had your Valentine's Day event. How did it go? It went very well. I ended up with, I think it was about 30, I don't even remember exactly now, I think it was around 30 entries, uh, talked to a whole lot more people than that, and I did learn kind of uh a after the fact or right right about the after the deadline that a number of people had thought that perhaps they couldn't enter if they were not ready to do a real estate transaction if they were not in motion in real estate they they didn't think necessarily they couldn't enter but they just thought it was inappropriate to enter um you know they weren't going to enter if they weren't going to do business with me is kind of what of course I, I assured them, no, 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 this is uh, this is just something I'm doing to help build relationships and to uh, to make sure people know that what I do is real estate. And that's, you know, I tried to assure folks like that, except those who flat out told me that they you know, were working with another agent. That's that's fine. But, uh, <laughs> right. Well, they can enter, too, though. Right. In, absolutely. In our rules. Anybody can enter. Yeah. And so maybe that's a good point. Maybe that's something that needs to be added to your card in the future. So I'm trying, to, I don't have the wording off the top of my head, but something sure. along the lines of no requirement to enter, um, you know, some way to phrase that better, uh, something to think about moving forward. But that's great. So you did have the event. Uh, you had yeah. people enter. Did you do the drawing? Did you give away I did. the prize? I did. I'll try and... Um... I'll see if I can share this. Let me see. Let me make sure I know how I'm going to do a share screen. I don't know if you'll get my audio or not. And I don't know if I can share, share this without you your share screen. The first thing when it pops up, there's a couple buttons down below that to, to select audio. Do you, uh, do you, why don't you do this? Close your share screen for a minute. And when okay. you pop it open, it depends on how you set it up, but if you hit share screen, does it pop open with a screen where you have multiple options that you can see of what you would share? Let's see. And then you like oh, I see share sound, button. yeah. And at the very bottom left, it'll say share sound and optimize for video. You can click one or both those buttons. 
and then we'd be able to hear what what you're hearing on your end. Okay. Yeah, I just hit your sound. You got the screen. I'm looking at the blue screen at this point. All right. A minute ago, I was looking at the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's Sorry. The, uh, Let me try uh, this Facebook. again. Share sound. There's Facebook, and you should now have it. Yeah, there it is. Good job, Blake. Okay, now let me see if I can play this. I just want you to see the. Well, if I have audio. Garden or Aaliyah. So we've had a lot of uh, interest and a lot of people excited about being in the drawing. We can um, hear it. It's been Good. fun talking to you guys about it and talking to uh, friends and and people that are just excited to be in the drawing there's no obligation and in fact if you want to be in future drawings you're going to want to contact me so that you can be in my vip club uh, i have the real estate blake vip club and it's really just for friends and contacts that are going to be uh, in in future drawings and in future uh, invitations i'll be inviting you to special things special events and and just some some cool opportunities that I've got in mind just to have some fun and I mean it's what I do I'm a realtor so let's uh, let's get started with our wheel of names I'm gonna ask Lee my camera person to help us out here and we're gonna do our first spin this is for a hundred dollar gift card for uh, Olive Garden or Aaliyah and here we go All right, Karen. Karen W. is our winner. $100 gift card. Congratulations, Karen. I'll be in touch with you. And let's see, now we're going to go for our $50 gift card. I'm going to remove Karen's name because she has won a prize now. So this allows me to remove her name. She's off of there now. We've still got Karen C. on here, but uh, Karen... W is gone. So let's uh, let's spin again. I'll spin. Every, all the names are here, and we'll see who wins. All right, <laughs> Samantha, congratulations! So you get a fifty dollars gift card to Olive Garden or Aaliyah, your choice. And I'll give you a call in a bit and we'll work that out. All right, we're gonna take Samantha's name off the list. So there's fewer names, chances are better for the $25 gift card. So the rest of the names are here. We're gonna spend one more for the $25 gift card to Olive Garden or Aaliyah. Oh, Eric. And congratulations, Eric. You have a $25 gift card to Olive Garden or Aaliyah. Okay, I think you get the idea. Wow. Let me uh, see if I can stop that for a moment. Oh, well, let me... Um, well, okay, I'll just stop sharing for a moment. Okay. Blake, that was excellent. Well, it was really, I wanted, really good. I wanted you to know that the so my wife was my camera person on that. And um I want you to know that the, the name yeah, exactly the the wheel of names was definitely a hit. It gives great energy to the video, it gives excitement, and people could see their names on the wheel, which I was gonna say that that was one of my um problems I ended up actually having. Not all the names. I I was moving fast, trying to get everything ready for my um, drawing, and making sure all my names checked. And I had my Excel spreadsheet. And you know, we had had that issue of transferring from KV Core uh, out. So I was I had all my names checked, saw that they were on my spreadsheet where I had moved them. Uh, everything was cleaned up, and then I uh, copied and grabbed the spreadsheet. But evidently, I left a, a short stack of names off when I dumped them into the wheel of names. So uh, thankfully, uh, 
only one of those people that got left off was on Facebook, but she, uh, she caught it right away. It says, where's my name? Um, oh, and no. anyway, I, thankfully she and her husband are going to have a double date with me and my wife here pretty soon. So. <laughs> what a great solution. Right? <laughs> exactly. I said, we're going out, to, uh, we're going to go out to dinner. Actually it was her idea. Cause I said, I'm going to get you a gift card. And she said, how about we just do a double date? And I said, that I like that we can do. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, you're a natural, Blake. That was fantastic. What, what a great job. Um, love how you put that together. Love how you showed it. Love how you videoed it. Did it on the Facebook Live. Got everything out there. Uh, so on the, the next step, uh, if at all possible, how are you going to deliver the cards? Are, and are you going to try to get uh, some kind of confirmation a visual confirmation yeah let me uh let me share the next post here cool. for you here is me presenting love it the uh, gift card wow that's that's the gift card presented to see i'm a visitor at the school where she is a librarian and i am handing her the gift card i'm see if i can i don't know if i can make that any bigger but anyway we see it yeah it's good so she's also a facebook friend of mine so i was able to tag her she's uh tagged right there and then i tell that she's the grand prize winner of the hundred dollar gift card and i also gave her some appreciation for because of where we were photographed the fact that she's the media center person at the high school. So I was able to acknowledge that and then mentioned if anybody wants to be in the club, you can do it right there. And this is what I wanted to you to see is I got tons of comments, 141 people gave it the thumbs up or hearts or whatever. Wow. 27 comments had tons of comments and one share of this. Wow. And a lot of these comments were people that I didn't know uh, because they were commenting because they knew her, which is great. That's what we wanted. <laughs> yeah. They and I had people telling me like um, all these congratulations, way to go. There was somebody in here uh, that told me she was very deserving. Uh, and then people were asking her if she's ever eaten at the restaurant, the Aaliyah restaurant. And how cool is this? She received a gift card to Aaliyah for her wedding she and her husband Dave and now they're gonna it's that's the only time they've ever been and now they're going back for their 13th anniversary <laughs> <laughs> you're a matchmaker yeah it made it worked it worked so wow. that's what I've done there um the the 50 and the 25 uh were a little more challenging they weren't available and so I'm getting those handed out, but I, I think getting that grand prize was was key, was key, and being able to show proof of performance. So I was very happy with that. And that was I, excellent. I, I'm thinking, you know, the the 175 bucks that it costs for the contest, the engagement that I got from that, and in just yesterday, you know, that video was Thursday. Just yesterday, I was uh, meeting with some people, and uh, one of the guys said, uh, "Blake, I've been watching your videos. I just, I just love watching them." <laughs> like, really? <laughs> That's great. I said it was fun, you know, and he wasn't even in the contest. So, um, but he, he's been watching the videos. So that video I, with that wheel that you gave me was that. That's I really felt like that was strong because of the. Um, it, it, well, the it's like Wheel of Fortune. It's Wheel of Names, and it's fun to watch. I used to sell television advertising. Wheel of Fortune is the most long-staying, uh, popular, and highest-priced advertising that I had available. It was like prime time every single night. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Blake, that's fantastic. I'll also uh, compliment you that when you made the video to spin the wheel, uh, you at the beginning, you did a little announcement of what was going on and you mentioned, hey, I'm a realtor. Right. 
And that was a great idea. Uh, don't be afraid to drop that in that that's what's going on. You know, I'm a realtor and I help people buy and sell homes. Now you don't have to buy and sell a home in order to enter my contest, but I do help people buy and sell homes. Like I just said it three times, right? right. Boom, 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 boom. So that's the, uh, don't be afraid to do that. That's uh, as you know, from advertising, <laughs> that's, that's what you got to do. You got to drop it in. Uh, I love how you put this together. Angela, do you have any comments for Blake about, uh, what you just saw with his contest and how he did it. Oh, there's... Well, I'm just very impressed. I think that you've done a wonderful job and you've really um, pushed through this. You know, this is your first contest, right? So you did awesome. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that just as you're meeting people, ask him if they want to be join the VIP group and talk about it one on one and and you can say you know I know that you're you may not be ready to move for the next 20 years and that's completely fine um but you probably know people that will be thinking about it um or I know that your sister is a real estate agent but did you know that I can connect you with um if you have somebody that has real estate needs all across the country I can connect you with a, a top agent so be in the group um, because the sister may not be in real estate in three, four years, but they'll still have that relationship with you. So I think you did an amazing job and that was awesome. Thank you. Um, it is, uh, you mentioned that about the sister. I, I was just thinking Karen Willis, the um, the grand prize winner. She, she told me uh, when I called her to say you won, uh, it, I don't, I don't remember how it came up in the conversation, but she said, you know, uh, of course, I do know other realtors. And I know she does. I know some that she knows very well. And she goes, but nobody's ever given me a hundred dollar gift card. So you're my realtor now. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> that's fantastic, Blake. Congratulations. Uh, one other quick thing. Again, you hit so many great notes on this. Uh, you, like I said, you're very, you're just a natural the, the a fact that you went to her work and you gave it there is powerful as well, because not all, now you're giving her recognition in front of her peers. And now her peers are going to ask, what was that all about? Who's that guy? And now they're going to find out, hey, there's this real estate guy who brought her this gift card. And she, they're going to be like, well, how do I get into that? Right. Why is not my agent bringing me a gift card? So these are things that I uh, that the top agents do, and you're doing it right out of the gate. Um, that's the beauty of getting into a system, right? And and the the strength of Blake for everyone listening is he takes action. He take he hears an idea and then he implements. It. He's not afraid. He's going out there and taking action. And, and in fact, I want to just wrap this up real quick with that quick thought, Blake. And that is, I I would like to hear from you. Why are you taking action on all these ideas? People, other people will hear this stuff and they'll get scared and stop. You are taking action and moving forward. Is there anything that maybe you could say to someone listening who's freezing that, hey, this is why I'm moving forward? Yeah, it's, uh, it's <laughs> throughout my life, I've always wanted to get everything polished up and right before I present it out there. But um, I have also learned that moving and just taking another step is actually the only way to get anywhere, right? We all know that. So um, sometimes whether, it, it, uh, I think we've talked about done is better than, I don't know if I'm saying this right, done is better than perfect. Uh, so instead of trying to make it all just right, just going ahead and moving forward and running into those issues as as they come up. I mean, I didn't have, I had people that entered the contest that were not on that wheel. So I, I might've been on the hook for a hundred dollar gift card for each of those people. Right. I mean, if I was really going to do it right, um, I should have given anybody that wasn't in the contest, some sort of prize and, or didn't get on the wheel. Um, but I went ahead anyway and moved forward and um, and and just got it done. And it's been very successful. And and even with that one mistake, you know, it, it, it's going to turn out making lemonade out of lemons because we're going to end up with a double date with that couple. So that's great. 
That's great. Great. I love it, Blake. One quick idea uh, I thought of, as you mentioned that, if you did run into that problem again, or anybody else where, let's say you took half your list and put them on the wheel and you forgot your other half your list, uh, one way to uh, possibly stay in the compliance, and again, uh, this is not legal advice, but uh, just a quick thought, was let's say that you had you had 30 people. So let's say you got 15 people on the first one and then they're, oh man, I forgot the other 15. And you, you could go give the 15 people all a prize and that could get pricey. The other thing you could do is just have a second uh, spin, right? You have a second uh, contest. And That's this true. way you are in fact giving it out to everybody. It is doubling your costs. However, you are staying in compliance with your, your potential laws and rules in your area. And that's the, the thing that you're mentioning. It was obviously a, a, just a mistake. Uh, but th that's just a quick thought is that, hey, you just that's have a, great a, second, idea. a second contest. Go, oh my gosh, I just realized, you know, go back on Facebook <laughs> Live again. I just realized I blew it and I didn't get all these people. Let's go ahead and we'll spin this wheel again and give out way another $100 gift prize and boom, would have been... By the way, you're just going to make more people happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it, that wouldn't be the worst thing. It's uh, at that point, I'm doing a whole other spin, making more people happy, more more prizes to award, yeah. <laughs> more yeah. workplaces to go to. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Jen Burns, one of our top agents at uh, the Referral Agent Summit. She's done a lot of stuff with us over the years to explain how she gets. She she's a solo agent who closes over 100 transactions a year does uh, about 70 to 75 referral closings each year. And one of her things that she likes to do is she get, does contests. So you're, you're tying right into the top agents, right? But the contest, she likes to give away a lot of prizes, like not one or two, but like 20, right? And little teeny things. She's like, I'd rather give a bunch of little prizes away to a lot of people make them happy than one big one. Now we've got other people have a philosophy to give one big one, but her philosophy is just a lot of little teeny prizes to make a lot of people happy. Well, 75 referral closings a year, I think that's not a bad model to use, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, so uh, one final thing, I guess I, I said final a couple of times, but Blake, this is fun, right? It's fun to reach out to these people with a contest and a giveaway. And that's why the top agents are doing it rather than doing the hardcore phone call of, hey, who do you know is thinking about buying and selling real estate, which is fine the first time, second time, third time, fifth time, it gets tough. Tenth time, they may not take your call. There are agents that do it and do it very successfully, but these these contests are a lot more fun. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. That's that's right on, Mike. That's, uh, that's part of why I wanted to go into real estate was this is the kind of stuff that's just, it's more fun in life to go and give people prizes or, or and help people and just to get a chance to get to know them better. Um, which is really what my goal is always is uh, I was told once if you could have a job where you just ride around all day and talk to people about what they're doing, then get paid in the end. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a great job? And that's kind of what sales can be if you set it up that way. And real estate certainly can be. And the Rams system is absolutely, that's what it's all about, right? It's just, let's go talk to people and have fun talking with them and getting to know them and get paid for doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and get paid a lot. Congratulations on that new listing. You, you're really starting to rock. All right, let's do this. Let's switch gears. Um, I'm going to go into some of the information we started off with uh, to help people uh, just a couple quick ideas, and then I want to share uh, an idea that may help uh, as far as a future contest. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is just basically talk about how to double your closings. And in this case, they're referral closings, uh, because for most people, that is what their closings are, is referrals. So I'm just going to give you two quick strategies, two quick ideas. So you might want to take a quick note. Uh, but again, it's just an idea to have in the back of your mind. There are two ways to double your referral closings in the course of a year. Number one way, number one way, and write this part down, double your RPP, double your RPP. And I'll explain that in a minute. Just write down double your RPP. That's way number one. <clears throat> All right, way number two is double the number of people on your list. Way number two is double the number of people on your list. These are two ways 
to uh, double up. And I'll just give the punchline. The fastest way is number one, double your RPP. So once you guys get in the system with your uh, your list, you got RAM set up, then you're going to work on number one, which is double your RPP. Okay, and then number two, we're gonna we also show you how to expand your list. That's a different one. It takes a little more time, uh, but it will also result in doubling up your uh, closings if you have the same RPP with the same with a larger group of people. So let me go back to double RPP. What is RPP for those that don't know? That's referral productivity percentage. Referral productivity percentage, RPP. It's a very important thing you want to know because it shows the health of your referral practice. And it also shows what the potential of your practice is. And it also shows if you, what you can do with your practice. I'll give you some examples here. RPP, the way you calculate it is you take your number of referral closings in the last 12 months and you divide by the total number of people on your PCSOI list. That's a special list called your past clients and sphere of influence. All right, so you're gonna take that, that those two numbers and I'll give you an example. Let's say in the last 12 months you had five referral closings, okay? And to make it all simple, let's say you have a list of 100 people that you're uh, reaching out to. Well, your RPP would be five divided by 100, 5%. So you're at 5%. And um, the way you can double your referral closings is to take that RPP from 5% to 10%, okay? And you do that by becoming more effective and more consistent with your marketing. You're going to be more consistent, more effective, and you're going to use more professional marketing. You're going to tap into a system like RAMS, something that's already been proven out there by the top agents. You know, we didn't just create RAMS out of the blue. We went out and asked all the top agents, what are you doing? And we just modeled them. It's the fastest way to get to, to success. And that's the same thing with this RPP number. We went out and interviewed all these top uh, performers as well as average day performers, okay? And what we've discovered is that the RPP range is around 5% for people who are getting started and getting rolling and getting into it, okay? They may or may not be consistent. Some people can get close to 5%, 3 4% is what I'm typically seeing. They're not even in a consistent program, okay? But they know people. They're just receiving referrals. All right. Once you start to focus on it and put into a program and get dedicated to it, agents are pretty quickly able to bump that up to around 10%. That means your list is sending you a closing 10 times, 10% 10 of the time of the number of the people on the list. So again, 100 people would send you uh, 10 closings every year. That's why this is so powerful. It just repeats. It's just not the same people. It's a different group of people on the list each year popping out or a different uh, number of re referrals. The top solo agents who are really awesome at this are able to max this out to around 20% RPP. I tell you that because that's your, your blue sky. That's your ultimate opportunity. So if you're at 5% at first, you go, oh gosh, that's terrible. Yeah, but what it really does is it shows you have this huge opportunity to double, triple, even quadruple your business with your same list. So that's why we come all the way back to where we started. If you want to double your closings, double your RPP is the fastest way to get there. And you do that by having a better marketing program, being consistent with it, and making sure it's professional pieces that are going out. And then as Blake just shared, you're really engaged with your people. These are all relationship builders. In the end, it's all about the relationship. All right, let me just finish up with number two, and that is double up your number of people on your list. That does take a little more time to do and a little more strategy, but there are ways uh, to complete that a little bit faster. Uh, as an example, some people will move into a new market where they don't know anybody. In fact, Jim Burns, we were just talking about, she moved into a new market where she knew 30 people. And within a couple of years, she had a list of 350 people on her list. OK, she did that by networking in. Her thing was college sports because she was a college athlete. And so she connected with other people that were interested in that. And she made relationships. And then she did all these things that we, we talk about with events. Right. She did event marketing. She doesn't like big groups. So she did small events and small group events to try to bring people together and close to her. And it worked. Right. So that's a way you can build your list through networking. I'll give you one other quick idea. 
and that is you can build it through um, orphan clients. This is a very advanced idea that the top agents use and not all of them use it, but the ones that do, do very well. We just had a guy in the summit, he closed 50 some referral closings. It was either 40 or 50 uh, year after year after year. He's a very um, introverted type person, uh, but he's been able to do this by adopting these orphan clients. Here's what an orphan client is. You go to a closing and uh, well, let's just say you go into a transaction and you've been working a transaction start to finish. You are working with your client the other agent is working with the opposite client, the co-op client on the other side of the transaction. During that transaction, you cannot go build a relationship with that other person, that co-op client. Okay? Most rules do not allow that as far as your state or the realtors, and it's just bad practice anyway. However, after the closing, they're up for grabs. There's, there's no more agency relationship in place. And the smart agents know this, those poor people are about to become orphans <laughs> because statistically 80% of the people fail in the first year and it doesn't get a lot better after that. Agents continue to fall out of the business through time. So what you wanna do is start a relationship with them and it's very easy. Let's, uh, an example would be you were the listing agent. If the other side was the buyer, OK, uh, the buyer wants to know about the house. Who knows more about the house other than the seller, the listing agent? So you can say, hey, I didn't know if you knew this is where the turnoff was for the water or this is where the, the best uh, connection for a grocery store is or a school or a doctor in the area or whatever. You can make a nice connection with those people. So, again, the top agents, they adopt those orphan clients because they're going to assume that the other agent's going to fall out and drop the ball. And statistically, we know it's true that even if they don't fall out of the business, they stop contacting their past clients, which is a huge mistake. Even the top agents will say they did it. I did it in the early years. It's a, it's a big error uh, to not reach out to your past clients. So you can capitalize on that by reaching out. Now, the other big, huge benefit then is you just had a closing. You didn't get one past client, you got two past clients. That's how you're doubling your list faster, okay? So that's the concept behind it. Uh, and I'll just say NAR, the NAR study, uh, where they went out and they researched uh, people who just had a closing in the last 90 days. And they asked them, hey, what'd you think about your agent? And they said, boy, they were awesome. They said, would you hire that agent again? I said, yes, we would. 84%, 84% of the home sellers and buyers that had just bought a home or sold a home in the last 90 days told the NAR in this study, we would hire our agent again. So a really good job we're doing in the field. They went circled back one year later and they went and interviewed those exact same people, NAR did. And they said, hey, uh, remember we talked to you last year and you told us you had a great experience? I said, yep. And they asked them a series of questions. And one of the questions was, you said you would hire your agent again, right? And they said, oh yeah, they did a great job. Here's the question. What's their name? What's the name of your agent that you used? What percentage can answer the question? 11%, only 11%, one out of 10. That means nine out of 10 can't even remember their agent's name. Why don't you go pick up those nine out of 10 and adopt them, those orphan clients. They need someone to assist them moving forward. They need someone to send their referrals to. It might as well be you. So what do you learn on all that? Uh, be firm during the transaction, but also be friendly because the other side is going to become one of your orphan clients. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and by the way, you're like, well, then should I be nice to them during the negotiation? No, you represent your client. You continue to do that and the other side will respect you for how strong you were during the negotiation. And once it's all over, they're going to want to adopt you and put you on their team. <laughs> so that's a quick idea. So let's stop there. Any questions about uh, doubling your referral closings with those two ideas of double your RPP or double the number of people on your list? Any comments?
I love it. And I, and I love the um, strategy really on the orphan clients, adopting orphan clients. I've certainly heard that and known that was a thing, but you kind of articulating it is very good. So I appreciate that. You betcha, Blake. And I know you are going to take action on it because you're yes, a section taker. <laughs> so I can't wait to see how you do that. Angela, mm -hmm. do you have any comments on that? Well, I think that it just goes back to um, really the formula is simple. It's it's not rocket science. And so um, I love the, the two two options um, on how to double your closings and very good information. Good reminder. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, appreciate that. Let's do this. Um, I don't want to, we're, we're using a lot of time today and I want to be sure that I share with you the lesson I learned on um, contest entry, excuse me, moving forward and using KV Core and their text code uh, option. Um, and so I'm gonna show you what I picked up because I was trying to figure out what happened there. Blake and I were talking last week about that. Let's do, hold on just a minute. Let me open my screen. Show you guys what's going on. And I will definitely be using the uh text to win option in the future as well. I just think that there's a an air of um, cool about that. <laughs> it's just, a, hey, that's neat, Blake. You've got that going. So that worked well for you, and uh, you would do that again then, Blake? Absolutely. Well, and if for no other reason that as soon as someone enters the contest, they receive an immediate reply back telling them, and, and in my case, I put all the rules of the contest in there. So they knew officially when I was going to do the drawing, although they didn't read that because they, I heard some people uh, had said they had entered the contest and they knew they hadn't won. Well, the drawing hadn't actually happened yet because it was five o'clock the next day, you know? Yeah. Uh, anyway. You, know, you mentioned a great point earlier, Blake, uh, as far as barreling forward, you just learn as you go. Right. These things, they're not going to be perfect. And you just do the bet. You have the right intention. And you do the best you can. It's all going to work out. Um, so let's do this. I want to show you uh, your so you can see my screen. Yes. OK, cool. So we're inside of KB Core and I went ahead and um, I did a search for I'm in my smart CRM. I guess I could just back out of this and show you what I did. Just fun. So here, I'm all the way back to where you would enter KB Core. We're going to go over to contacts or the smart CRM. It's going to show me everything. I'm going to go into, let me start that over. So I'm going to just start from scratch. I'm going to go into filters. Remember, this is how we're going to find people that were entered into our contest. And we're going to go into um, contact uh, details, hashtag, and then if you're following uh, my recommendation, you're going to type in your last name and it's going to show you the contest that you have. You pick the last one we did. And uh, then we go down here and press apply filters. All right. And then we've got our list. All right. And so uh, what we have, I, this actually shows my solution as well. Um, but we originally had this list of three people, Terry, Jane and John who came in, okay, uh, either came in or we applied that they were in the contest here. We have put the hashtag in for them. This is the one that's interesting. It's down here at the bottom. It's just a phone number, okay? Just somebody who came in on a phone number. We don't know who the phone number is attached to, right? That was our challenge. And, uh, and so as Blake had mentioned last time when he had this problem, he uh, called him up and said, hey, you know, I saw you entered the contest. I just want to make sure I'm uh, putting the phone number with the name and we'll make sure we get the prize out to it. If you win, could you just let me know who you are so I can match this up? Now, when you do that, maybe they answer, maybe they don't, maybe you get voicemail. Um, yeah, but if they do, you do talk to them, that's great. You can correct this. And what you do at that point is let's say this phone number, the, it ends in 9911, 
Maybe it goes to Jane. And we just didn't know that. Maybe that's her spouse. Maybe that's her second number. Maybe that was her work number. Something we didn't know. We ended up calling up the number. We talked to Jane. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this number and we're going to apply it to Jane. We're going to either put it into her phone number here uh, or we're going to go into profile details and add it in as a secondary contact number. Okay, let me go back though. Um, boom. All right, does that make sense? We're just going to add it into her file and that will correct it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to either delete uh, this lead, um, this number, or put it into archive. Okay, and so that's going to come up here, more actions. And um, uh, let's see, you can either delete the contact. Okay, everybody see that? Or you can do a thing called archive. There it is, archive the contact. And what that does is it kind of puts it into a back system. It takes it off of your active so you don't see it anymore. It's no longer in your way. However, if by putting it in the archive, if they take action, they'll pop up again and you can see it again and you realize, oh my gosh, I didn't fix this. Does that make sense why you might put it in the archive instead? Okay. Now that's one solution. You got a hold of them. All right. The other solution, and if you got a hold of them, then they're now in your regular group and they're going to download them to all your people. Let me show you why it didn't download before. I'm going to move us over here. Hopefully it's not messing up our recording. All right. <clears throat> Let me show you what happened and why you were not able to download. Over here on this number that just came in, a random number came in and they entered our contest. That's cool. But if we follow this over and we fall, I'm going to screen to the right and go to the column called owned by. Everybody see that owned by? Okay. So if you put them in to your system, either by upload or manual, they go in under your name. However, in the KV Core system, if they come in through the IVR, through the text message system, then they're immediately assigned to the company because they came in through the company's phone number. Okay, the company is the one who now owns that lead, although they were assigned to us by the company because you know, it was our uh, promotion that brought them in. Because of that, KV Core has a rule, you can't download anything that's not owned by you. Does that hit the bells? Did it go off? Okay. So because it says it was owned by the company, you can't download it. Yeah. Does that make sense, Blake? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually pulling my list up now to see um, that, but yes. <laughs> that is exactly, I'm sure, what's going on. Good. Let's talk about the workaround and uh, how to solve this. So, first of all, let me just show if we if we collect if we select these four people that entered. Ignore my top one. I'm going to show come back to that. So Terry entered, Jane entered, John entered, and this number just came in through the IVR. Inter IVR is interactive voice response. It's an old, old technology, but that's what the, the text message system is doing. So if it comes in through that, and then we go up here to download it, um, export, excuse me, export. We click export, it's gonna say, hey, um, oh, I wonder why it, did, it actually said that I would have four. Normally, <laughs> when I did this before, it would say three, but that's that should not have done. Oh, I know why, because I've got all four. All right, that's not going to work for me to show you what happened. Let me, in fact, let me do it this way. So I've got four. And now I've got five. Do it. Can you see that I have five selected? Okay. So if I go ahead and click the download and export. It's going to say, nope, we're only going to give you four. Only going to let you download four. And again, the problem and the reason that's happening is only four are owned by me. Right? Okay. Now we're going to get to the final solution. <laughs> All right. So this final solution is this. You call up and, um, and try to get a hold of this number. You can't get a hold of anybody. But you have to enter them in the contest. Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a brand new contact with this phone number 
as the uh, identifying information, but by you entering in this new contact, you now own it. So all the information, the only information you have is the phone number. So all you're gonna do is copy the phone number. You're gonna go in and add a new contact. And um, let me, sh I'm gonna just gonna show you what I did here. This is the way I actually solved it. And so what I did was I took the phone number and made that the first name. And I made the last name a thing called unknown. And then I also, you have to add an email address. So I just created an email address with the phone number at the beginning at unknown.com. Until I know who this person is, that is the only identifiers that I have. But now I've added them into the system. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to make sure that I hashtag them into the contest. And that's why once you do that, they're here. They're now on my list. They're on my list. And not only are they on my list, they're owned by me. And now that they're on my list and owned by me, when I go to download, oops, didn't get that last one. There we go. Uh, why it's not, maybe because I just opened it up. But anyway, they're now on the list. And by the way, I would have deleted or archived this bottom one. I left it there to show you what was going on. Uh, and now I'm going to go over to more actions and I'm going to export and it's now going to export all four contacts. And now I have all four contacts on my little spreadsheet to enter into the contest for the drawing. Questions. That's good information. I'm wondering. Um, so these these that are coming in through the phone line with my hashtag are being assigned to me by the uh by the company by kv core and it says they're company owned presuming that my broker owns those names now i'm just curious am i going to have other issues with trying to i i see what you're saying about uh copy and paste them out of there. I need to make sure they're all owned by me if that's the case or else I'm going to miss somebody. Uh, but um, are there other elements of KV Core that are going to be interrupted if I just leave them alone? So I've got, I've got probably 10 of these out of my group, maybe more, but at least 10. So I'm either going to need to dump all this new information in because I've got their names and everything with them. Or oh. that may be the only reason I needed it was for that particular thing. So my uh, guess, and you check your own records, Blake, is that the reason that they came in under company owned is that they came in under a phone number that you had not registered yet in your CRM. That's correct. Right. And yes. so what you're going to do is you're going to, let's say it was Jane, you're just going to copy this phone number and you're going to open up Jane's and you're going to add it in as her uh, either primary or secondary phone number, whichever you discover it is. Does okay. That sense? And now yeah. moving forward, when Jane comes into your contest in month, you know, the, in three months from now, it, there's not going to be any an issue because the phone number is now connected to you. Okay. So I do need sense? to. It's not going to happen in in uh, round two, because now Jane's phone number is connect. You identified that that number was actually Jane's, and you're going to put it in here. So I should do that really with any incoming lead that comes in straight from, whether I've got the um, got them somewhere else in my system or don't have them at all. A number of these I did not have at all. I knew the people, but they were not in my. Uh, sphere of influence necessarily the um and because initially they came in with nothing but a phone number right yeah and that phone number was not in your crm anywhere and so this is just a rule that they have remember every system is going to have some weird thing sure <laughs> this system its rule is hey if you use our tools and you bring in these random people that that you don't really know who they are yet, fine, but we're going to assign them to the company. That's just the rule we have. And then you go ahead, if they are in fact yours, you go ahead and do what we just said. You copy them, uh, you put them into the appropriate, uh, you make a, a, a file for the appropriate person, or you put them into the system that you already have. 
Uh, like, let's say you call up and you find out it's not one of these three people. It's not anybody in your list. They're brand new to you and you call them up and it's, it's Joe Smith and you go, cool. You just go over here and you add a contact called Joe Smith. You put in their phone number, you put in their email address. Remember the whole system connects by email address in KV core. So once you get that email address, boom, that's totally attached to you. Uh, it's just that you want to make sure their phone number is in there and all the phone numbers they have, because when they come into the contest next, next time you do your next contest, they're now going to be immediately assigned to the appropriate um, contact or file, uh, or excuse me, record. And that way, boom, it's going to work out great next time. That's does true. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. So, this yeah, is just whenever an I'm... intermediary step right here, Blake. Up here is just an intermediary step, step because you didn't get a hold of them. And you want to make sure that they're in your drawing because you're meeting the rules of your state. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm going to have to head out. Yeah. So you guys have a great day and um, good information. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Angela. I think I got it now. Thank you. Does that help, Blake? It does. It, it does. You, so you're concerned that uh, it's, I don't know if I addressed your concern. You were concerned that, hey, moving forward, these people would not be connected to me. Is that what it was? Well, um, I guess, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, I need to go take some more steps because as those phone numbers were coming in, I got their names, I assigned it to them and everything. So I've got a file now, even with some notes in some cases um, of what I discussed with them. I'm just going to need to rebuild those. But then moving forward, I'm going to know that when I ran, because it always will come in as a number. Yep. And that's all I'll have if it comes in this. If through they this, come in and they're not in your system already. Yeah, they'll just come in as a number. So I'll know in the future, let me start that number over as a new manual entry. And that way I won't have, um, you know, 10 of them that I need to go through now. And these will all be in there because they're all now part of my club. I want to do that. Right. You know, um, and now you'll do it in the future, just one by one just one by one and it'll be really easy. Just boom, boom, boom. It'll yeah. take a couple minutes uh, and it gives you the opportunity to reach out to them, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're talking about yeah. the whole purpose of all this is to have conversations and connections and what a great opportunity. Hey, I got your phone number, saw you entered the contest and I'm just reaching back out because uh, I, I didn't have a name here and I wanted to make sure that I'm uh, identifying the, the right person uh, if you happen to win. Uh, what's your name again? Blake. Hey, Blake. Nice chatting with you. Let me enter you into my system properly and boom. And now I've got another connection, another conversation. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah. What I just wanted you to have was a backup. If for some reason you didn't get a hold of them, at least they're now in your system and under your ownership. You can't just go in here and change the own buy. That's when it's company owned, you can't modify it. Yeah. As got far it. As who owns it. And I know there's, uh, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of why. I know it has to do with uh, KB Core has a lot of marketing opportunities where they're generating leads and handing off leads and so forth. And if you left the company, they want to own this lead and be able to hand it out to someone else. That's why they have their rules as far as why it came in that way and got connected. I know it's frustrating for our purpose, but just realize that they have their purpose. And yeah, so, yeah. Um, well, well, and we, I did we have a quick solution here. Yeah. And I, I am aware that that would, that would make sense if I left the company that somehow the company would now count these as their, as, as the their leads. Right? Or these remember they have other kinds of leads that are coming in. Other yeah. We're looking at this is what part of our contest, but remember once you made it this way, uh, if you were to leave the company for whatever reason, you could download all of these. Sure, including sure. that odd phone number that you never got a hold of that person, but they were yeah. they keep, they're in your contest all the time, and they keep spinning on your wheel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I can I could download them all if I needed to. Not that I'm planning on leaving the company, but that's that's always yeah, you got to always all think options. about it. Who knows? You maybe they go out of business for some reason. Let's hope not. But you you can know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, no, I'm good. Thank you. Blake, I hope that helped a little bit to get some clarity on that and, and what was going on. Uh, I know that that was a concern. So do me a favor. And uh, over the next week, 
go in and look at those in your system, see if you can move them either into the appropriate name uh, on where you would own it, where you actually, where you already had it and you just moved them into the correct name or you created a new contact, a new file uh, where you go ahead and uh, adapt it out as, as my example of unknown or, or whatever until you have better identification. So that next time you do your contest, <laughs> Boom, it'll be real easy, right? Just right, boom. right. No, I've got to do that because uh, these people are all now part of my club. <laughs> That's they're, right. <laughs> they're all part of my VIP club. So uh, I've got to I've got to make sure that they're all in there. So Excellent. Yeah, that's good. Well, Blake, let's go ahead and wrap this up for today. Yep. And uh, our little recording, again, it was fun. Thank you so much for uh, being here and being part of this. Uh, and everybody get out there, have a lot of fun and keep moving forward. Bye for now.